Hello and welcome to another Sea of Power Scripts video with me, Christian Rauchenwald. Now, you watching this video actually means something very, very important. It means that we updated our Facebook's conversion API integration. And this video is going to show you how much more data we are now reporting to Facebook and what you'll have to change in your Sea of Power Scripts account to take advantage of those new features. So with that, I'm gonna jump into my CF PowerScripts account and just to show you the full journey. So when you are in your PowerScript section, you'll have to select a funnel where you have Facebook tracking currently in place. So I'm gonna pick my demo funnel here. Now, if you have not yet set up our original version of the Facebook's conversion API integration, then I recommend you actually go ahead and skip this video and just watch the tutorial for the Facebook Pixel PowerScript, the Facebook Lead Tracking PowerScript, Facebook Custom Events PowerScript, Facebook Conversion Tracking PowerScript, the Facebook Conversion API PowerScript, and the Conversion Tracking Add-on PowerScript. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of videos to watch, but most of them are quite short and they provide you with a lot of information and all the details you need on how to set up your Facebook tracking completely with CF PowerScripts and how to also set up the conversions API. Before you go, however, you can still take a look at what's possible with the new integration because that's where we'll start. So for that, I'm just gonna click on this welcome page funnel step here on the shortcut and copy the live funnel step URL and then go to the Facebook's events manager where I already selected the pixel that's set up in that funnel and am at the test event section. Plus I also made sure that the test events token that we have here is set up in the Facebook conversion API power script. Now I can just paste the URL in here and click on open website, which will take us to our landing page in our unfinished demo funnel. And when we look into the events manager, you can see that we have the page free event and the view content event reported, plus five seconds later, a few five seconds event. Now those events are made possible by the Facebook Pixel PowerScript and by the Facebook Custom Events PowerScript. If we look into those events, we can see that the view content event is tracked with a value of $1 cent, plus it also reports the content category, which is the name of the funnel, and the content name, which is the name of the funnel step and the name of the funnel page, which for example, if you're running a split test, would have different values for the control and the variation page. Plus additionally, we also now with all events report the funnel ID, the step ID, the page ID, the funnel name, the step name, the page name, plus the page type. So for example, this is a miscellaneous page type in ClickFunnels, but for other funnel steps, it would say, for example, opt-in or order form or OTO upsell page or something like that. Now, additionally, because I previously visited that funnel and in the Facebook Pixel Power Script, I also have advanced matching enabled. You can see that the script also forwarded the city, email, first name, IP address, last name, phone, user agent, and zip code to Facebook as well. And if we look into the server side event, it reported the exact same data. The same goes for all the other events. So every page free event has at least the funnel ID, step ID, page ID, page name, funnel name, and so on, plus the page type. And again, both the same for the browser and the server event as well. Plus with advanced matching enabled all the additional information if the user already provided it on a funnel step within that domain. Now, if we go back to that funnel page, the next thing we can do is from here, just pick to which opt-in page we wanna go. And I'm gonna go from here to the one that uses our recapture v2 integration. And when I click on that button, we can already see, so the page reloads with the new funnel step, but we can also see in the events manager that we triggered a, another custom event for the button click, and it's called recapture v2. And again, that also now supports the Facebook's conversion API, followed by the page free event of that new funnel step and the view content event of that new funnel step. Here on the opt-in page, if I start typing or if I change the input fields, we can see that it now would trigger the contact event, again, based on the Facebook custom events power script. And in this case, also like all other events now, supporting the conversions API. And when we go back and actually check the I'm not a robot checkbox and opt in, we end up on our unfinished sales page where again, when we go to the events manager, we will see the page view and the view content event reported by the pixel and by the server as well. Now, unfortunately on this unfinished sales page right now, we don't have a button that takes us to the order form. So we'll have to go there manually. However, before we do that, I wanna point out something else. While we have the view five seconds event, which we configured on the first landing page, 
The new updated Facebook integration also supports event based on when the user scrolls a certain amount of pixel or a percentage of your page. And additionally, events once a certain element, section or row becomes fully visible within the user's browser. So you are able to trigger an event, for example, specifically once that button became visible and you would know or you would be able to create an audience of people that you know definitely scroll to a certain area on your page. Now if you combine that you will be able to also improve your retargeting audiences which is something I explain further in the Facebook custom events power script tutorial. Now as said to continue to the order form we're actually going to have to grab the order from URL because currently there is no link between those two pages. Copy it from CF Power Scripts, go to our tab here and open it in here, which will open up our order form funnel step. And again, within the events manager, if we scroll all the way back up, we will be able to see the view content event and the page free event for that new page. Now I think on that order form, we also have something set up when we start typing. So when I'm changing my name here, for example, or when the user would start to enter his or her address, and that should be the initiate checkout event, as we can see here. And last but not least, in this case, I'm going to select the main product here, plus all the four order bumps, and enter the test credit card data here and click on buy now, which will now trigger multiple transactions or actually one transaction for the user, but multiple events in Facebook because on the order form, I have it configured that my one-time purchases track as purchase event, my subscriptions and payment plan track as subscribe event, and the subscription with the free trial that's on that specific funnel step tracks as a start trial event. Now, if you want to know why I set it up like this and why you also might to consider setting it up like that, I recommend that you watch the tutorial for the conversion tracking add-on power script. In the events manager, if we take a look now, somewhere we had the initiate checkout event on the order form, followed by a lead event because that funnel step also has the Facebook lead tracking power script added to it, followed by the purchase event for my main product and one of the order bumps, which also contains not only the usual information, so the funnel ID, step ID and so on, but now also contains the product ID or IDs and the product names of the products the user purchased, plus additionally a parameter called is OTO that has the value no when on an order form or yes when it is an OTO page, which you can use to create, for example, custom conversions, which is something that I explain further as well in the Facebook pixel power script. And after that, we see the page free event of the upsell page, plus also the start trial event for the subscription that's set up with a trial containing the predicted lifetime value. So how much statistically I expect to make from users that sign up for the trial. And on top of that, the subscription event for the regular payment plan and subscription product also with the predicted lifetime value, followed by the view content event of the upsell page. So while the events might not always show up in the perfect order, everything actually got tracked at the right page. If we now go to our upsell page here and I press this button, which actually does not buy a $95 product, but is actually a one-time product for $397. And we go back to, again, the events manager and scroll all the way up. We can see now that the order form loaded in the background here that we again have, and we have to check, First of all, the view content event, no, that's still from the upsell. So the page free event for the order confirmation page, the purchase event for my $397 upsell, and the view content event of the order confirmation page. Again, the purchase event contains all the information, the product ID, product name, the page name, page type, is OTO, yes, and so on, allowing you again to use Facebook custom conversions to basically improve the ad reporting within your Facebook ads manager. So you could, for example, set up custom conversions and then columns in your Facebook ad manager to specifically see how many transactions did you have in total, but how many of those actually bought your order bump or how many bought a specific OTO or simply how many of those transactions were actually OTO purchases and how many were placed on a regular order form. The possibilities are quite endless. It really depends on how you wanna structure your columns in the ads manager and how you use the additional data that we now provide with each event to Facebook.
And while all of that already is a lot of additional information that we provide to Facebook, and in my opinion, a huge improvement from our existing Facebook conversion API integration that only could use server or send survey events based on the webhook for new contacts or new transactions, because now we support every event plus added a lot of new custom events as well that you can use on your funnels, it actually doesn't stop there. If we go from the events manager back to CF Power Scripts, where you should have the conversion API power script in place and click on edit and then click here on this link to go to the webhook section of your funnel where you should have either one webhook with purchase created and contact created or two webhooks for both separately. If you now, for example, go to the deliveries for purchase created and here we see that overall, since I set up this funnel and set it up for the conversion API, I placed a total of four transactions, one on the order form, then the upsell, and then again, currently recording this video, one on the order form and then the upsell. Now, if we click on attempts here for the upsell purchase, we can see in the body it says event saved for later processing and we can click on that as well. And in the details page here, you will find the URL that you can copy and that you can just paste in the address bar, which will show you the event details. So based on this page, you will now be able to look up for all events for a period of two weeks, what exactly happened. And you will see that First, the Facebook pixel tried to report the event to Facebook. So that entry will always be here, but doesn't mean that the tracking with the pixel was successfully. And the event tried to provide this additional data to Facebook as well. Based on that event, then the conversion API also reported the event to that pixel successfully with then that Facebook trace ID, which you could use if you reach out to Facebook support regarding a specific event. And we forwarded the additional information that you can see here to Facebook. Last but not least, you can see that with a slight delay of three minutes, the ClickFunnels webhook data was actually not used because an event with the same event ID was already processed. So because our integration already was able to fire the survey event based on the pixel tracking attempt, we did not use the webhook data in this case and simply discarded it. However, if for some reason we would not receive those two events, then we would have the ClickFunnels webhook event and it would then based on the webhook data trigger the conversion API event as well. And as I said, you can look this up for every event that you can find within your webhooks for a period of up to two weeks. Additionally, when you're testing your funnel and for example, in the events manager, you see your events, you can expand the event, copy an event ID from here. And then within that URL that you can again find in one of your webhooks, just replace the event ID value with the one you just copied. And you will see the same thing for the event that you just copied. So in this case, we're looking at a few content event, as you can see here. And here we only have the information from the pixel or from the attempted pixel tracking, followed by the conversion API result. And the reason why there's no webhook data here is because ClickFunnels as said only provides the webhook for contact created, so for lead events and for purchase created, so for purchases, subscriptions and trials. Now you may be wondering if it's a good idea to have those links available considering the sensitive information that we have within the details, so like the customer's name and so on. And that's why we added a new setting to the conversion API power script itself, which is called your IP address. Now when you edit or add the script, you can always find your current IP address in the bottom down here, and you can simply paste it in here. So if the computer device you're using to access this link here does not match or have the IP address that you entered here, then you will not be able to view any of that data which means it's only possible for people within your network so that share your public IP address and only if they know the precise event ID of an event to view those event data. And again, after two weeks, they get deleted from our server anyways. It doesn't stop there, however, because on the top left, you can also see a visitor ID. And when you click on that, it will actually load the entire history for the last two weeks for that specific visitor. So every page load that we were able to attribute to a specific visitor. In my case, that's loading quite long because I've been testing a lot and obviously been visiting a lot of different funnel steps during that period. Whereas for your average visitor who maybe visits your funnel and has like three, four, five page loads on that funnel, now, if you scroll down here, you could look up the entire history of a user visiting your funnel. And even if you have a funnel on a different domain, if a user opts in there using the same email address, we would be able to connect those two visits and you might likely see the history reflected there as well. So here for each of your page load events, you see our order confirmation page, our upsell page, our order form page, our sales page. 
the opt-in page with the recapture integration and our demo funnel welcome page, you can see each event that triggered on that funnel and you can simply click on each event. So for example, the contact event that we triggered on the opt-in page when we started typing. And again, look up the details, what exactly got reported to Facebook. Now, besides the custom events that I mentioned that we haven't seen in this video, like triggering an event when a user scrolls to a certain percentage of the page or a certain amount of pixels or triggering an event when a certain element becomes visible, that's pretty much it. That's everything our current Facebook pixel or in conversions API integration is able to do. And I think that's pretty much as much as you can track. I honestly can't think of anything else that we could report to Facebook. Last but not least, with our new integration, you're also able to actually use the Conversions API for your custom events. So if you would have some custom code on your funnel right now that triggers a Facebook event, you could actually also use the Conversion API. For that, you would have to again go to CF Power Scripts. I'm gonna close that. And instead of having the custom code in your funnel or on your funnel step or funnel page, you would then either to the funnel or to the funnel step or page specifically, depending on where you have the event, click on add new and look for the custom code power script. And then here, usually you would have something like FBQ brackets track followed by your event name and then optionally followed by some parameters like for example value uh, 001 and currency uh, US dollars. So this way when the page loads you would trigger the your event name event with a value of one US dollar cent. Now as said the parameters here in the end so those here for the value and the currency are optional but at least you would have something like this fbq track your event name or fbq track lead or anything else for that matter which would not work with the conversions api however if instead of that and i'm gonna just restore it with the parameters you can now write cfps dot track brackets and then simply your event name and again either just like this or followed by Again, the custom parameters, value 001, currency US dollars. And now that event will first track with the Facebook pixel, but simultaneously use our tracking logic to get reported to our server, where then it will be reported using the Facebook's conversions API. So in other words, with our updated Facebook conversions API, not only do we now support all Facebook standard events, so lead, purchase, subscribe, page view, view content, and so on, but all events also now contain more information that you can use in Facebook custom conversions. So like the funnel ID, step ID, page ID, the page type for purchases and so on, also the product IDs, product names, and so on, and if it's a purchase or a transaction on an OTO page or not but you'll also able to use the conversions API now for every other event that you can think of. And that pretty much sums things up. So that's what the new conversions API solution has to offer for you. Last but not least, the question is, what do you have to do? And the answer to that is, if you already have our current Facebook conversion API power script in place and set up, then there is nothing you have to do. Our new integration either is already active for you or will be active within the next couple of hours for you and you don't have to change a thing. I would still recommend that you check out our updated tutorials for each of the Facebook power scripts because they show you how to properly take advantage of the new features that we added as well, but technically you wouldn't have to do anything. If you were, however, among our beta users, so you helped us test and develop the updated Facebook conversion AP PowerScript, there is one thing you have to do. Then in your account, you will have a so-called beta features PowerScript. And the only thing you have to do is remove that from your account. So you're not using any beta features anymore, but you will still use the updated Facebook conversions API anyways. With that, we reached the end of this video. As mentioned, if you want to learn more, I recommend that you watch the updated videos for all our Facebook tracking scripts and for the conversion tracking add-on because they go a little bit more into depth about what's now possible and how you can use it. Last but not least, if you're happy about the results that you achieve with our Facebook tracking solution, you can actually help us out. Simply head to the ClickFunnels group on Facebook and share your experience there. If you've used another conversion API integration previously, maybe even share how it worked with them compared to how it works with us because not only would this help us to attract new users and therefore grow faster and in return hire new additional developers and develop more and better features for all of you but it obviously would also help 
fellow ClickFunnels users to improve their tracking and the results of their Facebook ads. Thanks for watching and again, thanks for using CF PowerScript. See you in one of our other videos. Until then, bye-bye.